Hello and welcome to the video tutorial VidTut brought to you by RiSight Studios. This is on the web at RiSight.com. Alright, today I'm going to be talking about um, Cinema 4D and how to create a, uh, a texture, a real texture. And I'm actually going to make a, a wood texture on, on a Motex. You can see my Mo Motex over here and the light and actually two floors. So, as you can see, it's all about the texture, and you can see like the details and the wood and the details like that. It's not a hundred percent, in my opinion, yet. But you know, on the bended part, that that looks like a piece of bark, and it's actually pretty nice. So let me run you through how I did this. Um, actually, before I do that, let me break apart what we have here so you can tell. So it's actually rendered. So I'm going to move it. So now it's uh, unrendered, but I have the rendered region on, so you can kind of watch just a little section of it. Just gonna get this one section. I'm gonna just put it right there. So I'm gonna keep an eye on that one little corner. Okay, so I have two textures down here. Um, I'm actually gonna open up just this one here and I'm gonna run through what's here. First of all we have a color, bump, and displacement. Those are the only three things I have only three things I have turned on. And that's it. The color if I click on it and I go to texture, um, I click on that, you can see it, I don't know if you can see um, it's actually really just the picture of the wood itself. But the interesting thing that you need to keep in mind is that if I go to bump and I click on that, you can see it's a black and white image of that piece of wood. So we're going to run through how that happened and how I created that. Now if I go down to displacement, you're going to also see it is actually the same texture that was under bump. And there's a couple settings that are changed here. Um, I'm going to go back to displacement. I did turn on sub polygon placement. I did do round geometry. And I have map rounded geometry, map resulted geometry off, and keep original edges is also on. Now, all of these things, when turned off or messed with, will change a lot of the details. And for instance, if I turn off round geometry, that should square off back to the real way that that particular font was. But since this is, I'm trying to work with it, um, I don't want to, I want to have some details, but I also want to have kind of a natural, interesting, Adirondack looking shape. I had turned that on. Um, anyway, so let's kind of just recreate this. You can see what's going on. So let's close this. Just got to do a file new and uh, see so square one. All right. First thing we do is we create a floor. Always create a floor. And I'm just going to make it automatic. And next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to get some text. I'm going to use MoGraph text a little faster. There it is. Um, we're just going to change this to bark. Um, I'll just say wood, so it's not the same thing. Alrighty, let's just slide this guy back, and I'm actually going to put this on top of the deck here. Um, so I'm going to go down here, just negative 90. There it is. Raise it up. Just put it in there just a little bit. Okay, and we're just going to spin around. And get that wood right kind of yeah so you can kind of tell what we're doing here all right looks pretty good um next let's just create our texture which is probably the most important reason you're here so i just double click it and i'm going to click on it again and first i'm going to turn off specular i don't want that that highlight you know, wood doesn't really reflect that much but you know you could keep that on and really kind of tweak it down if you wanted to. Um, but like I said, I don't want it on, so it's off. Next thing I'm going to do is go to color. And uh, I'm going to go to texture. And I'm just going to click on this guy. It's an image pop up. And then we're going to pick our texture. Now, we want the original image. And here it is. It's just a nice piece of bark. And you can see it's got this is the shadows, and that's the, the grooves, and everything. So that's what we're picking. All right, okay, open. No, we don't want to save that. And there it is. Okay, looks good, looks great, fantastic. Thing is, is that on the edges here is perfectly round, which is no good. So what we need to do is we need to bring those tournament texture. How do we do that? Well, first of all, it goes two ways. If I just put on bump, and let's turn it on, and then let's go to texture, I actually am going to get, I don't care about the color in bump, I care about the black and white, the details. Because the peaks, which is the white, is what's going to be on top, and the valleys, which is the black, which is what's, what's going to be um, low. 
So that's why I created this. Now, all you have to do to create this is really create um, a grayscale image off the exact same image of your texture and just knock the contrast crazy up. But you know, got to keep an eye and everything. I actually worked with channels with this, which I found like the darkest channel and or the most contrasted channel and use that. But you don't have to do that too much. Recommended, but not necessary. Okay, so bumps in, and now we have our texture for bump. Looks good, I guess. Let's even raise it up, you see. But there's really no detail on the size. That's what you need to place, displacement. So let's turn it on and go back to here. We're going to get the same one, the one with the black and white. And there it is. Open, new, and then, wow, just tearing apart. It's because it's strength on 100%. Even if I knock it down to 50%, 53, whatever, it's going to be still kind of nuts. So let me knock it down even more, but keep an eye on it. You know, you want to get it to be natural. Um, you know, you might play with this a couple times to kind of get it just right. Next, like well, I said before, I did the sub-polygon displacement, which was really helpful. Um, we'll keep round geometry off for now. We will keep map resulting geometry on. Okay, so let's apply this. I'm just going to drag it right on top of it. And let's hit render. Bam. Um, that looks terrible and boring and flat and brown. So let's kind of work out what's going on here. First of all, there's absolutely no shadows, which just stinks. So I'm going to give it a light. And I'm just going to bring the light here and bring it right up top. And then do it again. Um, didn't turn shadows on. Shadows, soft shadows. Okay. So now we have our shadows. Let me turn you off for now. And see our result and whatever. Um, light's obviously too close. Let me just jack it up a little bit. Okay, whatever. That's fine. Now, what's going on here? It's render again. And why is this just brown and there's no texture? Well, here's the reason, and here is how you fix it. The reason is, is that it's only rendering on the outside edges of this thing. So you got to click on the material underneath your texture remote text or underneath your object in remote text. And then you gotta go sorry, let me go backwards. Da, 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 da. Material. And you gotta go to projection right there. And it was this is UVW mapping. You want to go down to spatial, spatical. <laughs> I'm not sure what that says. Now when you render, it actually looks right. Now that looks pretty darn good. Um, I'm having some issues here. But that's mostly to do with the fact that we have um, only one polygon is kind of going through there. So it's just kind of stretching it. And I can even click on Seamless and get an even better results. Still not fantastic right there. But the W is looking pretty fantastic. Look at the details. You can even see a little bit of texture kind of breaking apart there. Um, it's nice. It still doesn't have a lot of texture like I wanted to. The light is out of control. I need to just really raise that up. Let me just... That shadow is killing me. Okay, no, better. Just gonna fix that. Turn that down. I, turn, I put on a thousand, gives it a better detail. And I'm just gonna go to general. And uh, I'm gonna knock it down a bit. Actually, it's gonna put it into make it dark, which isn't what I wanted. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, whatever. It's fine. The light's fine. I'm not gonna cry about the light. Anyway, so here we go. Details looking pretty good. Um, let's zoom in and hit this guy again. I don't want this to be too long of a tutorial. So you can see our details are looking pretty nice there. Let's say I want to kick that up a bit. How do we do that? Pretty simple. We just go back to our material, go to displacement, and let's put this under a interactive render region so I can kind of keep an eye on that one little corner. You don't want to fill that up too much because you, you sometimes you just want to see parts. All right, so let's watch that. If I raise that up, it just gets crazy. It's kind of nuts right there. It doesn't make sense. So you can kind of pull that back and start figuring out just what you want. But this is how you do it. This is how you get your texture, just the way you want it. And once you kind of have that one little corner, most of it should really work for you. And then, of course, when you you know apply this to different parts, it's going to be a little bit different. One part's going to be a little bit different than the other. Sometimes you break it up, the, the, all the wood, and, you know, you get your results that way. So that is how you create a texture 
using Cinema 4D and uh, textures. And thanks for watching. Have a lovely one.